Welcome to the Real News Network in Baltimore. I'm Kim Brown. Unprecedented summer warmth, flooding, forest fires, drought, and torrential rain. Extreme weather events are occurring more and more often, but now an international team of climate scientists has found a connection between many extreme weather events and the impact climate change is having on the jet stream. Jet streams are fast-flowing air currents found in Earth's atmosphere. And to discuss this significant new study titled Influence of Anthropogenic Climate Change on Planetary Wave Residents in Extreme Weather Events, which is published published in the peer-reviewed journal Nature, we're joined by its lead author, Dr. Michael Mann. He is the author of the book titled The Hockey Stick and Climate Wars. His latest book, co-authored with Tom Tolles, is titled The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. So, Michael, we appreciate you joining us again here on The Real News. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. So more and more scientists have been connecting the dots of human-caused global warming and extreme weather events. So tell us about the role of the jet stream and what you found. Yeah, so we know climate change is leading to uh, more extreme weather events of certain types, and obviously more heat waves, more intense heat, um, and, and more drought um, because of the, you know, as you uh, bake the, the earth with uh, record temperatures, you dry out the soils, uh, you get um, uh, record level, levels of drought, um, and a warmer atmosphere holds more moisture, so you can get record flooding as well. And, and all of that is related to sort of the, just the basic attributes of the atmosphere getting warmer, uh, the earth getting warmer. What our study shows is that there's an additional factor that is leading to more extreme weather. Uh, climate change is changing the behavior of the jet stream uh, in, in a way that makes it uh, not only more likely to get stuck in place so that you have you know, low pressure centers uh, and high pressure centers sort of stuck in the same place, uh, warm temperatures or cold temperatures stuck in the same place, wet conditions or dry conditions stuck in the same place. But climate change is actually amplifying uh, the, the uh, jet stream waves in a way that leads to larger regional weather anomalies, uh, larger amounts of rainfall, of sustained rainfall, um, uh, more uh, sustained drought, uh, more sustained heat. So there's this additional factor uh, in how climate change is changing the jet stream that is intensifying many of these extreme weather events even further beyond what we would expect just from the direct effects of global warming. So talk more about how we know that there is a heavy influence of human-caused or anthropogenic climate change to extreme weather events, and not just El Nino or El Nina or natural change in weather patterns, as climate deniers would have us believe. Yeah, no, that's right. So what we looked at was what is the pattern of temperature um, that leads to this particular configuration of the jet stream, where it gets sort of stuck in place and where the waves, the troughs, and the peaks of the jet stream become amplified. So you, you get very large regional weather anomalies. And because the jet stream is stuck in place, um, individual regions continue to get rained on for weeks at a time or continue to get baked. Um, by sunshine and unprecedented warmth for weeks at a time. It's those very persistent anomalous weather patterns that give us the extremes that we've seen in recent years, the 2011 Texas and Oklahoma drought where they lost 25 percent, their cattle and agriculture was devastated, uh, the 2010 Moscow heat wave and wildfires, uh, the uh, 2015 California uh, wildfires. Um, each of these events, it turns out, occurred when the jet stream was in that particular configuration. And what we've shown using climate models is that global warming is making that jet stream configuration more frequent. And it's making it more frequent because it's changing the pattern of temperatures um, in a way that favors that pattern in the jet stream. Uh, the bottom line is that global warming um, leads to amplified warming in the poles where you melt away sea ice in the Arctic, so you get even more warming in the Arctic. And that means you decrease the gradient, as we call it, in temperature, the change in temperature from the warm tropics to the cold poles. We decrease that um, difference in temperature by warming the poles so much. And when you do that, 
you actually change the pattern of the jet stream and you change it in a way that projects onto that particular pattern that leads to these unprecedented weather anomalies. So Michael, you used both computer simulations and observational and historical data going back to rec records from as early as 1880 and roughly 50 climate models from around the world. So what did you deduce from these recordings and these models? Yeah, so the first thing we did was to look at the climate models and, and project forward um, in time over the historical period and see um, what happens to uh, this particular temperature pattern that we know is uh, associated with these anomalous jet stream conditions that give us these extreme weather events. And we were able to show that um, uh, very consistently among nearly all of the climate models, um, that pattern of temperature change becomes more and more frequent. And again, it becomes more frequent in large part because you're warming the poles so much. That makes that particular temperature pattern that gives you these jet stream conditions uh, more frequent. And that's happening in the climate models. Well, then we looked at the observations to see what was happening to this temperature pattern in the historical surface temperature uh, observations. And exactly the same thing is happening. That pattern is getting more common over time. We know that's happening in the observations. And in the observations, we know that that is tied to many of these extreme weather events we've seen in recent summers. What the climate models tell us is that that change is due to increasing greenhouse gas concentrations. So what other key takeaways from your study should we know in your opinion, Michael? Uh, what we should know is that um, you know, many of the extreme weather events that we've seen, particularly in the summer season, uh, the mechanism that we're looking at is primarily relevant to the warm part of the year, the spring, the summer, uh, the early fall. And so when we think of many of these extreme heat waves and droughts and flooding events we've seen in Europe and, and North America in recent years, um, many of these events are indeed associated with this unusual pattern in the jet stream. What we've done is to connect the dots and say that pattern in the jet stream is being made more common by human-caused climate change. So we've sort of connected the dots from many of these extreme weather events that we've seen in recent years to human-caused warming of the planet. So in terms of practical application, you looked at the historical atmospheric observations to document the conditions under which extreme weather patterns form and persist. So does this mean that we could get to the point where we can know an extreme weather uh, event will arise long before it actually happens? Yeah, uh, there's a good chance that we can identify in advance with uh, weather models when the atmosphere appears to be getting locked into one of those configurations that favors these extreme uh, persistent weather events. Uh, it doesn't mean we could predict the precise weather events, but we can predict when we are likely to see an increase in these extreme weather events in the northern hemisphere. So there's some potential predictive capacity there. You know, Donald Trump released his budget and it contains a um, barrage of cuts to federal agencies, particularly to the EPA, to NASA, to NOAA. So what do you think about these budget cuts that Trump has proposed across all government agencies on anything related to climate change affects um, important research such as yours um, that may actually aid in human survival on a warming planet? Your thoughts about that? It's dangerous. It's frankly uh, dangerous. The cuts that he is proposing in NOAA and NASA's Earth Science Program, um, the satellite programs that uh, uh, help us measure what the atmosphere and ocean and, and ice are doing, um, that forecasters use to help us uh, understand the threat uh, from hurricanes um, and extreme weather events. So it's, to me, his defunding of many of the basic uh, scientific programs that are there to measure, to monitor what's happening with the climate is sort of like having a child who is suffering from a very high fever and then deciding to just stop measuring their temperature, uh, stop taking their temperature. Um, that's effectively what he's doing, but not just with a single human being, with our entire planet. And it's a threat to all of us. Um, and it's a, it's a threat to companies and corporations and stakeholders that rely upon this information for assessing uh, risk and making important decisions. And obviously, it's a threat to all of society, uh, which will suffer 
from the lack of uh, information that we will have and uh, the lack uh, of uh, our uh, ability to uh, make, to take certain precautionary and adaptive uh, steps to protect ourselves from the impacts that climate change is having. The name of the report is titled Influence of Anthropogenic Climate Change on Planetary Wave Resonance and Extreme Weather Events. Uh, we've been joined with Michael E. Mann. He's a doctor from Penn State University. He's also the lead author of this. If you'd like to check out this report, we will have a link to it at the bottom of this interview. Michael, we appreciate you joining us and good work on this report. Thank you very much for, for your contributions to this. Oh, thank you. Always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you, and we appreciate you all watching and supporting The Real News Network.